Uh, Tisha at the start of this year, uh, 76 year old Mary Hughes was in Roscommon Hospital and was transferred to Port Yonkelen after suffering a seizure. Mary passed away on the 4th of January at Port Yonkelen Hospital after waiting more than seven hours for a bed before finally being admitted uh, to a ward. Mary had been forced to leave a bed in Roscommon Hospital to go on to a trolley in Port Yonkelen Hospital. Her daughter, Idel, spoke to the Roscommon Herald when she said, My poor mother went to Port Yonkala unwell, and it is not so much a case that she died because of it, but it was more that her passing was not as peaceful as it could and should have been. The crisis increased her suffering and ours. The system is hurting people beyond belief. Taoiseach, sadly, this is one of many, many personal stories emerging around this country. And Taoiseach, if we delve down into the numbers of patients waiting on trolleys to date in 2023 and analyse this as a percentage of the number of beds in each hospital, which I believe is a far better reflection of the pressure that each hospital is under, then Port Yonkala Hospital with just 157 beds and an average of 22 patients on trolleys each day this year has a 40% greater demand on its beds than the headline-grabbing University Hospital in Limerick and a whopping 325% greater demand on beds than Galway University Hospital. And should we be surprised? No. Because one, not one additional bed has been put into the hospital since the emergency department was closed at Roscommon Hospital in 2011, even though Port Yonkala has taken on the bulk of the Roscommon referrals. Taoiseach, in June 2020, I wrote to the then Minister for Health, the Chief Executive of the HSE and the Secretary General of the Department of Health, pointing out the desperate situation in Port Yonkala, which at that point had lost one in ten of its beds due to the COVID reconfiguration at the hospital. At that stage, the hospital had put forward a proposal seeking two modular buildings one of which was to provide the space needed in its emergency department to deal with the present demands that were being placed upon it. 31 months later, we are still awaiting a decision from HSE to States as an average of 42 patients a day lie on trolleys in that hospital. We need to see this project proceeded with the modular emergency department as a matter of urgency, Thishuk. And I'm asking for your intervention and for your intervention in similar proposals in other hospitals that can ease the current crisis that we're facing. Thank you. So, thanks very much, Deputy. And I just want to say at the outset how very sorry I am to hear about Mary's uh, experience um, of our health service. Um, for most people, their experience of our health service is very, very good, and that's what they tell us in patient experience services, surveys. But I know for some people it's very bad. Um, and Mary, sadly, is just one example of, of many others that all of us uh, could recount to this house. Um, and uh, it isn't acceptable that she experienced that. Uh, and we do know that uh, overcrowding in emergency departments, delays in getting to a ward, um, do result uh, in reduced patient outcomes. And we know from international research from the UK, from Western Australia, from other parts of the world, uh, that it can result in higher uh, mortality as well. Uh, and that's what makes this uh, a very serious situation. Um, we are working on this as a government. Um, in the past three years, in less than three years, uh, Minister Donnelly has added over 1,000 beds uh, to our acute hospital system. Um, more than 1,000, in fact, if you include community beds. Uh, we have 6,000 more doctors and nurses working on our health service than we did uh, three years ago. And we're doing a lot to um, keep people out of hospital in the first place, more funding for general practice, for example, community intervention teams, and record levels of funding for home care so that people can get out of the hospital when they're well. Um, but that is still a work in progress and still much more to be done uh, in, in that regard. And we are catching up on a period uh, where there was very little investment because the country couldn't, couldn't afford it. Um, uh, and I'll be working very closely with Minister Donnelly over the next couple of years, uh, and Minister Donnelly as well, and the whole government, to see what we can do to speed up health capital projects, uh, because too many of them are taking too long. Uh, some, are, some happen pretty quickly, really impressed what happened in Kilkenny in the matter, but some are just going on forever, and, and it's not, not okay. Um, and I do want to accept the point that you made, um, that uh, um, overcrowding in a small emergency department in a small hospital um, can actually be worse uh, 
and I've seen it, you know, I've been to small emergency departments like NACE, like Port Yonkila, um, where 10 or 11 patients on a trolley blocks up the corridors, blocks up the whole space in a way that wouldn't be the same uh, in a very large emergency department with a lot of floor space. And I, I think the point you make is valid uh, in that regard. Um, I should say that um, the budget allocation for the hospital has gone up uh, to 85.6 million, uh, up from under 70 million five years ago. Um, the outpatient department is now being is going to be located to a new modular build on site, and that will allow the existing outpatients area to be converted into a 12-bed ward um, with eight single rooms en suite and two rooms, uh, no, eight single rooms and two twin rooms en suite. Um, this area will accommodate service users requiring isolation rooms and end-of-life care, and I'm told that can be ready for occupancy uh, later on uh, this year. And the deputy is also aware that enabling works have now started on a new 50-bed ward block, and that will provide 50 ensuite single rooms, allowing for the relocation of two medical wards from existing buildings and a general improvement in the services to patients, and we believe that could be open uh, next year. Um, SALT have also advised us that the ward block could potentially accommodate additional development and enabling works have been completed with that in mind. Pishuk, what we need to see is pressure taken off the emergency department and we need that modular building and I'm asking for your intervention in relation to that. And yes, Thishuk, you are correct. The second modular building at the hospital uh, was to facilitate the relocation of the outpatient department and provide those 10 additional single beds to replace some of the beds uh, lost due to COVID reconfiguration. But Thishuk, that project was to be completed as part of the 2020-2021 winter initiative, but these beds will not be available until this summer. And as you say, Thishuk, the 50-bed war block is being constructed at Port Yonkala Hospital, and that's thanks to Minister Harris's intervention on my behalf. Uh, and these, sadly, are only replacement beds, and what we need to see at the hospital is more beds. Now, again, at my instigation, provision has been made to facilitate a further 50-bed ward block at the hospital. And I'm asking you that plans would now be expedited to proceed with this extension while the builders are on site. Thanks, Deputy. Um, uh, as you know, the Minister of Health is here, here with us, with us this, the, this afternoon and will certainly speak on it later. And we'll work together to do anything we can to speed up the increase in capacity in Port Yonkula, which is necessary, and all the more necessary um, since the, the reconfiguring of Earth Common, and given the fact that Galway University Hospital is so, is so congested itself. Um, just to say, as I mentioned earlier, the outpatient department is being relocated, and that will provide a new 12-bed ward. Um, also, the work is ongoing with the design team on a prefab extension to the emergency department uh, to give the emergency department there uh, some more space. And we're waiting an updated draft of the plan for the prefab, prefab so it can be expanded. 50-bed um, block we mentioned earlier, and uh, that will open next year. Um, the development of a further 50-bed ward would involve significant reprovision and reconfiguration of the campus. And so far, no capital submission has been made in relation to that. Um, but it is something we're open to. Uh, the population in the region is only going to increase. It's going to get older. Uh, and it's um, uh, unquestionable that we will need further capacity um, in addition to the 50-bed the, the, uh, the block that's being built now. Thank you. 